Last night in chat, I was asked a question about how to change the background color in a sidebar or other page element. I showed a very quick method for doing that, which is to click inside the div tag in the HTML view and then quickly changing the background color with the Add Properties tool. I want to review how to do that again and then show you another method of doing it that also offers some options that the first method does not. Let's begin by first looking at div tags. Here you see a group of them, div, cl div class container, and that is indented all the way on the left, then div class sidebar, and notice that is indented slightly inside the container. And that's because the sidebar is inside the container. The container is the thing that stretches from left to right. It's your whole page. So make sure that you're clicking inside the correct div bag. For example, if we want to change this sidebar color, we go over, click in the sidebar. Notice now that we are at div class sidebar. And so anything that we change now is going to, in this div tag, is going to affect only that sidebar number two. So we click inside it, you see my cursor is inside it. Then we can go over to the properties menu. We can either change the background color by changing the uh, hex code that is there, the EAD CMA, or we can add another property that overrides it. Easiest to go down to add property, select background color, click on your color chip, it opens up the color palette, and choose another color, which we just did. As you see, we changed the background color of sidebar number two. So that's a very easy way of changing a background color on a specific element. Just click inside the div tag. Now here's another way of doing it. Again, you see that our cursor is inside the div class equals sidebar two. It's on the right hand side of that opening div tag. That's important. Let's highlight this entire div class, this entire opening and closing div tag. And therefore, anything that changes we make in that div tag will affect only what is highlighted there. So keep that in mind, that you must know the beginning of the div tag and the end of the bit div tag. And you see there's even a comment down there that says exclamation point hyphen hyphen end dot sidebar two. Now here is the alternate method of doing this. Look down here at the CSS rules. Look at where it says targeted rule sidebar two. That is the rule up there in that div class. And we can change anything anything in that div class by clicking on edit rule. Let's do that. We click on edit rule and the edit pane comes up and as you can see we can change anything that's in that sidebar. Here's the background color. We can choose another background color and apply it. We can also change anything about the type that includes font family. Here let's choose another font family and apply it. You see that changes. We can also choose font size and we can change font size. Here we'll change the font size on this cursive. We can also uh, add an image to the background. Those of you who are working with background images, this is how you should be doing it. We can uh, select our image, browse to it, open it. Dreamweaver links to it, provides a relative link in our root folder, and apply and the image will show up. Notice that our black type doesn't show up on the image, so no problem. We go to type again and we select type color, choose white, and now the type will show up on our image. Not that I would ever use that image or anything, but it shows you how it can be done. So that's how you do it using the uh, edit rule in the CSS menu down there at the bottom. 
Now, another thing that came up was how to change colors in a table. So let's insert a table here. Insert table. And uh, we will, let's give it three rows, three columns. Uh, on our pixel, let's increase the table width to 400 pixels wide, about half of that uh, page. Border thickness, zero. Uh, cell padding is the distance in between text or whatever is inside the cell in the edge of the cell. Cell spacing has to do with the spaces in between the cells. So we're going to leave cell spacing alone and do only cell cell padding. Uh, let's put in a caption. Caption uh, is going to be changing colors in a table. Okay, there's our table. To change the alignment, we simply go down, click on the table tag, go to the alignment tool, and select center. Fantastic. To change the background color of the table, all we have to do is select the table, highlight all of the cells, go down, click on our color chip, and then select the color that we want. And there we see, you see that we've changed all the cells. Another way is to select columns, and you can have altering colors in your different columns. There we change the columns on the left. We should try to change the columns on the right to maybe the same color. I'll try to guess it here. I'm not guaranteeing anything. Oops, a little bit off, but you get the idea. So there you see how to change the colors in the whole table as well as, well as columns and rows and cells of that table. Now let me show you another little trick for doing table borders that really comes in handy. Now notice that the background color that I placed into the content column here the content section. That background color is now the color of the borders, the cell borders of my table. Let's go up here to Live View and you will see that the background is now showing through the space between my cells. Now if I want a different background other than the page background to show through, there's a way of doing that too. And we're going to use a technique called nested tables. We're going to insert one large table. Let's make it uh, 600 pixels wide, one row, one column. And then remember that you don't want any border thickness, no cell padding, no cell spacing. You just want a plain table there. Let's give it a caption. And now we're going to select that table. Oh, and let's apply this color to it. Okay, now that's the background color of our master table. Now we can also, after we center it here, now we can put in a nested table inside of it. We click inside, we go up to Insert, Table, and this time let's put in a real table, the one that's going to contain our data. Four columns, four rows, has to be the same table width, Let's put in one cell spacing, no header, click OK. Now notice that our new table has the same background color. Let's select all the cells, go down to our CSS, and click on our color chip, and let's change. And now look what happens when we go to Live View. Notice how the background table, the one that is green, is showing through that one pixel space between it and the nested table so that it looks like I have these really neat one pixel wide green borders all around the table. And you can continue playing with this to achieve any color combination that you want. Let's highlight it and if you don't like white and green you simply uh, go to your color chip and select something else until you get the kind of contrast that you want. Hate that Microsoft uh, green. Let's go with something else. Again, I am changing the cell background in the nested table. Let's highlight them again, see what other 
contrast we can come up with. Here's an orange and green. That should look pretty good. A uh, little too bright, isn't it? Highlight them again. Come up with something a little less alarmist. Okay, that's not bad. Kind of a wine and green. And if we start putting text in there, you can then use your CSS edit table to change the color of the text so that the text and the background of the cells as well as the border of the cells provided by the master table all contrast in a way that achieves the highest visibility or the kind of design that you want. Okay, if there are any other problems that you run into and that you need to hear about, please just email me and I'll be happy to get back to you quickly with a video response that you can use as well as maybe your classmates. Talk to you later.